What's up everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. So, there is a huge disconnect right now in gaming. And at this time and in this day and age, I think one of the best things that has happened is a lot of our opinions are available for everyone to see. And if your opinions are out there, they're gonna get challenged. This is one thing I learned very early as a YouTuber. So what I learned to also do was I like to make a lot of really outlandish claims and sometimes I like a lot of very hard hitting subject areas just to go ahead and touch on. Now for many people they might, you know, judge or weigh this as probably not the very best way to grow a YouTube channel, but I've never really been interested in this, you know, big huge YouTube channel thing. I mean, I have another one that's a little bigger than this one and I never really you know, intended to pursue growing as a YouTuber. I've never really wanted to be a full-time YouTuber. I got a job that I really enjoy doing, and that's nice. It's a job where there's a high demand for my skill set, so eh, it's, you know, it's a nice thing to have. So these comments that I've been making on Gotham Knights seem to have been pulling out, you know, a lot of people from the woodwork, and I think it's exciting to be able to have these conversations because at the end of the day, we're going to get down to the truth of the matter. And that's one thing I really like. I want to find out the truth. But one thing about finding out the truth is when you're on your way to truth, you really don't want to make generalizations and conclusions that you have no basis for. And that is the most important thing. So we're looking at Gotham Knights and I talked about my impressions on playing and beating the game. And I said, I thought this game was a very good game. It pulled a lot of people out of the woodwork. Some people said things like, well, the game is like one of my audience members said in that video. It says this game is an objectively bad game. And I laughed and I said, now that is a wild claim. But since you made the claim, let's figure out how you came about that, you know, conclusion. So I asked this audience member of mine, I said, OK, I'll ask you one question. Have you played the game to come up with the objectively bad phrasing? And they said, well, all of this other talk, they even at some point gaslit me and told me that I'm using, I'm on copium, insulted me, telling me to take my L and all of these other things other than telling me how much they've played of the game. And I went ahead and followed up. I said, if you've played the game, can you please tell me how long you've played the game? And if any, if anything, if you played the game at all, did you even make it past your first arrival to the Belfry? And if you did, I'd just like to see receipts. You can DM me on Twitter or you can maybe post a link to some picture somewhere here on YouTube. I'll find it and we can basically verify and I'll be happy to take your opinions as, you know, something that I weigh seriously and I'll respect them because they're your opinions based on having experienced the game yourself. So this was the conversation that, you know, ensued and a lot of people weighed in. And for those of you who weighed in, I apologize. I had to delete a lot of comments that were not the comments of this person because I wanted their answer and I didn't want it to get lost in translation. So I do value your comments. I read every single one of them before I deleted them so that we could get down to the clarity of things. Now, some people may say that this approach might not necessarily be the best approach to come down to finding out what people truly do think about the game. I can understand that. But again, I am talking about the disconnect between a lot of the fan base. There are people who are in the fandom who took the time to examine the game, regardless of what the narrative was across. And for many of them were surprisingly pleased as to how much they enjoyed the game. Then there are people who are also in the fandom who were able to listen to other people's perceptions of the game, and that has guided their own opinions. They formed an opinions based on their opinion based on that. They've also been able to look at the game and said, you know, and formed an opinion. And to that, I can give credit to, but they cannot use the word objective because to be objective about something, at least to try your best, you have to at least make sure there's no reasonable doubt. So if we go ahead and look at, say, maybe even these people who are actually in a position that, you know, they are in a place enjoying the game or not enjoying the game. Some of the ones that we can actually say, okay, we want to weigh their opinion and we want to take it to the best possible measure of the means that we can are places where we're going to start from, like, say, the reviews of the game that are available to us from people who've actually played the game. Not saying that people who haven't played the game don't have an opinion that is actually weighing anything. But remember, the reviews came from people who had already played the game. So I actually weigh any individual who writes a review on almost the same length if they've played the game as all of the reviewers out there. So this is why I'm going with this methodology. I had somebody tell me the other day, why aren't you going you know, to the Metacritic score? Well, the Metacritic score can confirm who's actually purchased the game or played the game. So the scores here 
even the scores on the Steam page, which I'm going to go ahead and show you right now, are the scores that we can actually take into account because those scores and the way people are receiving them kind of give us an idea as to what real reviews or a plethora of reviews are going to basically show us about Gotham Knights. So this is a very fun conversation to have. And I am going to continue to have this conversation because I really want to get down to the bottom of what's going on in this particular game. I am one of those people that will search and search and search until I can pin it down. And if I can't, I just keep going. And this is one of the reasons that I went into game development, because at some point I got sick and tired of everybody else telling me what you know these games were about. And I just said, I'm going to go ahead and do it. It was a very, very hard thing to do. It affected my health very bad because I was spending nights just reading, watching videos, learning, doing tutorials. It was such a mess to be able to get my life in place where I could add that to my very busy schedule. But I think it was worth it the entire time. And so we look at these reviews and we look at the percentage wise of people who appreciate the game having played it compared to people who do not appreciate the game having played it. So I'll do a quick number, a quick numerical count is showing here on Steam that we have a 72% of the 4,757 user reviews for this game being positive. Steam uses a positive or a negative type review, it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So you don't really have too much of a middle ground. I mean, you can write your review. So this is definitely something that you have, right? We go on the Microsoft page as well, and we try to look at say, okay, what are the reviewers on the Microsoft you know, page thinking? We have an aggregate of about a five star at 65%, four star at 16%. So if we use those two percentiles, the five and the four star, then we're also looking at, say, you know, a percentage level of, say, closer now into 81 percent. So we're looking at 81 percent, 72 percent. And we're seeing that if you weigh it, the people who appreciate the game, having played the game, are actually in a place where they admire some things about the game. They like some things about the game. They have their reservations. But we can take all of these people all 4,000 of them on Steam and all 890 of them here on the Xbox page and say, we can actually almost match all these people and have their opinion similar to the level of the reviewers who scored Gotham Knights and gave it a score that they thought was fair to the game, to, you know, the game. And I think this is a very good way to measure it. Now, here's the challenge. A lot of people who see these scores, it cannot vibe in their head that somehow some people like a lot of the aspects of this game. Some people even came and said that the story of this game was trash. I mean, that, that was one. I mean, you could pinpoint the areas of the story where there are weak, you know, scripts or weak things. But to say that the entire story of this game was trash, that already just helps us in a place where we're wondering, like, hey, did these people even engage in the game? Like, what in the world is going on? And so you see these outlandish comments. And to me, I just cannot fathom what the obsession with this game and trying to trash it is about. And I think, in my opinion, and I'm not for those of you who played the game and, you know, you said you weren't impressed by the game. You're in the review segment. You're in your top tier. You're giving me an opinion that you feel, you know, is based on your experience. You're not just, you know, throwing something out there that I, I don't I do weigh and value your opinions. And even for those of you who look at the game from outside and say, you know, for me, the game doesn't necessarily look like, you know, it's something that I can engage in. It doesn't look as good as another game. Eh, I can take your opinion. But. It's when people that haven't necessarily played the game come out and say the game is objectively bad. That's when we start to ask questions. In fact, somebody tried to defend this audience member of mine and said, you don't have to actually play a game before you can actually tell that it's bad. Really? Can you imagine if you tuned into IGN for God of War Ragnarok review and the IGN person said, well, I didn't play this game, but I can just tell you right now that the game is actually, you know, not good. <laughs> Would you not be surprised? <laughs> right? So when you're giving your opinions about a video game, and that's tradition, it's usually a place where you kind of play it. That's why we have reviews of people who've played the game, because the game provides much, uh, much more hours of entertainment, or maybe if it's a movie that say, you know, you can't necessarily gain from not experiencing it. So I really enjoyed this entire conversation. And I think Gotham Knights has really brought something to the forefront of our gaming world today 
that I'm happy to be in the middle of to be having this conversation because I'm that kind of person that, you know, I'm not afraid to be wrong. And I think that's what a lot of people probably don't really understand yet. And and this is one of one of the things about your creators. I work in education. Academics is a big thing. So if you're wrong, you have to be proven wrong and you have to be able to eat that you're wrong. But until these folk can start proving me wrong and making sure that they're doing all due diligence, I believe that my opinion probably holds a lot of weight because I'm actually looking at these things from a perspective where we're doing our due diligence and looking at different areas and different aspects. Even in the optimization side of the game, I think that, you know, among the people who are looking at into the information about the optimization, I'm making sure that I'm doing my due diligence. I've made like four or five videos about optimization that has actually grabbed the attention of other developers and other studios. Dude, do you know the kind of pressure that brings on you? Because now you've already put yourself out there about the technical side. I'm sitting here watching all kinds of Unreal Engine presentations and my head is spinning left, right and center because I cannot fathom not understanding a lot of the intricacies in Unreal Engine and its optimization. So I'm looking at that, too, because I want to get to the bottom of all of this as best as I possibly can. And so this is very cool that Gotham Knights is bringing the conversation out to the open. And it's a game that I do really like. I mean, subjectively, I guess, because every review and every opinion is subjective on a video game because, you know, video games do have their own thing. And at the end of the day, I guess you can pretty much weigh something one way and somebody else can weigh something a different way. But at the end of the day, I would love to hear what it is that you think about all of this in the comment section. Be nice, be cordial, be respectful, I guess. That's the word I want to use. I mean, nice is subjective. Everyone's got a different threshold. I mean, if it, me being nice maybe may seem mean to somebody else. So I guess maybe respectful is the way to go. And anybody that starts to call names or starts to say fanboys or shill or all this stuff, it just means that you have no argument. It's called an ad hominem. You can't, you can't build an argument on insulting people. It doesn't really work. And, you know, for somebody like me, it doesn't it won't even in fact, it will just make me focus on trying to ask, you know, why you're coming up with your and I'm just going to I'm just going to basically be interested in why you're actually doing it. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. What is going on with this disconnect that the fans or people who've decided to engage in the game, for the most part, a good number of them are enjoying the game. And then for the most part, there are those on the outside who are looking And they form their opinions based on subjective, just like on all sides, you know, analyses of the game in terms of its content, its presentation, its fun factor, and so on and so forth. And I understand if somebody looks at optimization and says, you know, I don't want to play the game for optimization, whatever. I say, you know, whatever. We've seen games have come out in worse states that many of us still played. Some people defended. Some people defended Cyberpunk 2077. They're still here telling me. Cyberpunk 2077 was a better game than Gotham Knights. When I was sitting there and I watched Cyberpunk 2077 get taken away from the PlayStation, the PlayStation Store uh, temporarily, they were given refunds. And somehow it's a better game than Gotham Knights. I know, right? Talk to me in the comment section. Peace out.